string and no frets. Hello, hello, and welcome to Great Britain's Greatest Recipe. Oh, boy. <laughs> Ain't meat found a... Mm -hmm. Oh, God, I can hear myself on the stream. Yeah, I gotta turn you uh, down. Oops. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. Uh, um, I, I meat found a cool British culinary history site for us and has handpicked its finest delights. Thank you, A meat. I took your doc and I fucked up the formatting, so it's <laughs> going to be weird. And I accidentally replaced all the pictures of food with one picture of food, which is horrible little bun men. It's not food. <laughs> the doughboys. <laughs> it's not food. Uh, Acer Ocelotl, can you please read about or boot? Oh. About? about? A boot? <laughs> uh, uh, all right, let me. Um, I will. Um, Who do we have in the room I... today? Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> well, me. Hi. In, in the room tonight, we have Acer Ocelotl. As my Chris. Boots Rain Gear. Oh. Jack Pick. <laughs> Oi, lads. Kendra Globster. I didn't have a chance to watch a Peaky Blinder, so I'm just going to guess what the accent is. Montrith. <laughs> Evening, people. <laughs> so, drawing, who's totally not British, so he'll do an horrible accent too. Hello, Zos. And Zola. Hello, hello, hello. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I am not prepared for this. That's all right. All right. Uh, AC Ocelotl, can you please read us the aboot? Oh, the aboot. Uh, I am some kind of uh, baldy guy with a beard, and uh, my name is Glenn Hughes from Windsor and the Derbyshire Peaks. He has been collecting England's food history for more than 20 years, huh? Using the British Library's astonishing newspaper collection from cookbooks going back to the 1300s and from snippets in notes from correspondents all over the world. The Food of England project now brings together the... Well, I just suddenly went from kind of French to Quebecois. <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of French? Tabernacle! <laughs> hey, yes, did Kyle, yes, these guys. Anyway. <clears throat> now it brings together the original receipts. Yes, receipts. Recipe is French. For over. Ho, <laughs> ho, baguette. For over 3,000 dishes from the forgotten English pasta dishes of the 14th century to classics of today, like Marbite and Sticky Toffee Pudding. Then occasionally it turns up on telly and radio, but is more often found behind the scenes, advising food producers and assorted master cooks. No, not chefs. You know why, huh? Well, do we have to fight Acer now? <laughs> well, I, 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 I can't even try to fight. Oh, <laughs> uh, spies! Uh, let us first. Oh shit! Now I'm French. Um, <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Let us, let us first, first the, 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 the wigan slappy. A, a pie, typically a small meat pie, served inside a sliced bomb cake, also called a wigan burger. What? The uh, origin of epithet pie eater for an inhabitant of the Lanka town of Wigan, although cited as ancient, only seems to go back to the 1980s. While the slappy is regularly available from Wigan what? chip shops, the alternative national dish, the Wigan kebab, Consists of a selection of pies on a snooker queue that does not seem to possess any reality beyond stage comedians, though that hasn't stopped the Wigan Warriors Rugby Club from offering a patriotic car sticker featuring the culinary delight. Too modern! Time to go back! Back to a time of dubious pies! Oh, Zala, can you please read to us about the extra lumber pie? <laughs> Oh boy, here we go. <laughs> For, to make a lumber pie from Exeter, take a pound of lean veal, free from strings, shred it very small, season it with cloves and mace powdered, um, some powder of dried or sweet herbs, some lemon peel grated, some pepper and salt, 
three large spoonfuls of grated bread, spoonfuls of bread, a, a little <laughs> juice of like lemon, <laughs> and five or six buttered eggs. Hmm. Okay. Uh, hmm. mix, these, mix these ingredients well, well together into a paste or as a forest meat for balls. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be so hard. We are all six years old right now. Yes. This meat for balls is a farce. It's a farce. <laughs> About the bigness of small walnuts. Then take two or three large veal sweat breads. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Learning a lot of new words today. Oh, yeah. uh -huh and cut them in pieces, then provide a pint of mushroom buttons well cleaned, and the yolks of eight hard eggs cut in halves, a Good dozen coxcombs well scalded and cleaned. Coxcombs? Is that, is that yeah, a chicken it is, comb? It is. It is. It is. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> then add some eggs to that. <laughs> Lay these with a seasoning of pepper and salt in a good paste that covers the bottom of your dish. First, laying bits of butter on the paste at the bottom. Some will put about half a pound of currants into this pie, but every one to their fancy. When your ingredients are disposed in your dish, lay on about four ounces of marrow and the quantity of six ounces of butter, then close it. Just what? before you set it in the oven, pour into your pie half a pint of water, and as soon as you take it out, pour in half a pint of white, warm, warm, white wine warmed and serve it hot. Boy, I, you know, I know that those yep, are words, yep, yep. and I know what they mean all <laughs> independently, but... <laughs> yeah, I was not picturing this recipe at all while the words are coming out. I don't know! <laughs> got, there's, there's I, I added, to, and I added then, to the stream what might be a picture of this, but I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't see any rooster flappies in there. <laughs> you gotta dig in there. They sit at the bottom. Can you please oh take Shropshire pie? <laughs> oh, boy, all right, all right, lads. A Shropshire pie. To make a Shropshire pie, first make a good puff paste crust. Then cut two rabbits to pieces with two pounds of fat pork cut into little pieces. Season both with pepper and salt to your liking. Cover your dish with crust and lay on your rabbits. Mix the pork with them, take out the levers of the rabbits, parboil them, beat them in a mortar with as much fat bacon, a little sweet herbs, and some oysters if you have them. Oh, sure. Season with pepper, salt, and nutmeg, mix it up the yolk of an egg, and make it into balls. Lay them here, and then your pie, some artichoke bottoms, cut in a dice, and coxcombs. If you have them. balls and corn, yeah, they, they love those those chicken things. <laughs> the chicken but, combs, they love but them. that's different. This is a cox comb that doesn't have an X. Mm. 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 That's true. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> the Great. comb's taken from a guy named Cox. Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh. Oh no, I'm not going there. I, I regret. Well, we're this. back to the jelking hour. <laughs> 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 Grate a small nutmeg over the meat and pour in a half a pint of red wine and a half pint of water. Close your pie and bake it for an hour and a half in a quick oven. Sure to lock it. <laughs> well, that's wonderful. Um, uh, pies are certainly an interesting thing in in England. They sound very wet. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think. Wait a minute. Do you, you put the rabbit in the pie and then you take it back out of the pie and take it out? <laughs> Yeah, yeah you, you want an essence of rabbit in it, not. <laughs> yeah. You sort of like reduce it to a slurry with your mortar and pestle. Oh, you Kendrick... know me just destroying a rabbit in a mortar and pestle. What are you doing? <laughs> Kendrick Lobster, you oh. seem to have some questions about English cooking. Maybe they will be answered in the meat section. Uh, could you please read to us about Badger Am? <clears throat> All right. Badger Am. It's an almost unknown meat in England, but badger ham has been occasionally a local delicacy. A wartime correspondent to Western Morning News on Saturday, the 22nd of February 1941, wrote that in Italy, they eat the flesh of the badgers, and they do so in Germany, boiling it with pears. Incidentally, badger hams were a local delicacy in parts of England less than even a century ago, and a badger feast at which a roasted badger is eaten with pen knives, no <coughs> pen knives, no forks being allowed. Sure. is an annual event at the Cow Inn in Ilchester. The diet of badgers is different from that of foxes, except in spring when they eat many young rabbits. Badgers do not themselves consume much flesh. 
and there is no reason why they should not be good to eat. They are said to taste oh. much like pork, but travelers say that bear meat provides a closer comparison. <laughs> I can think of a few reasons why they wouldn't be good to eat, but... You know. I'm gonna be real with you, I don't think I've ever actually seen a badger. <laughs> Anything that, could be a ham nowadays. Is that a, is that a big <laughs> animal? No. Don't badgers not. have parasites? Like, it's quite a lot the of them. They all have <laughs> parasites. Other the pigs. Badgers are the size of bears. I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> they're huge. Oh, God. Badgers you, the size of elephants. the famous riding badgers of... of... <laughs> well, I mean, like so that. it's an age so it's aged right because it's a ham you have to age it before you can oh. eat it oh well, you would think that no but if 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 lobster you'll read on to a gammon of <clears throat> badger roasted mm. a gammon of badger roasted oh. from <laughs> mr rt of like oh boy like <laughs> <laughs> it's a badger is one of the cleanest creatures in its food of any in the world and one may suppose that the flesh of this creature is not unwholesome. It mm. eats like the finest pork and is much sweeter than pork. Everything is capitalized. Damn. Then, just when a badger is killed, cut off the gammons and strip them. Then lay them in a brine of salt and water and that will bear an egg. Hold on. <clears throat> and that will bear an egg for a week or ten days. What? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Jason, I'm going to try that one I more time. I believe it. They mean is... a brine of salt and water that Men. an egg will float in. Just oh, what a okay. I thought this was making like a cockatrice or something like that. No, I, <laughs> thought it was, I, I thought it was hatching an egg. No, no. <laughs> I was no. with Jack on that one. Like that, the, uh... This is bad grammar. You need a bear egg. <clears throat> yeah. oh. Oh. We're making a, 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 a badger homunculus okay. right here. <clears throat> Cut off the gammons and strip them, then lay them in a brine of salt and water that will bear an egg for a week or ten days. Then boil it for four or five hours, then mm -hmm. roast it, strewing it with flour and rasped bread shift sifted. Then mm -hmm. put it upon a spit, as you did before the Westphalia ham. Serve it hot with a garnish of bacon fried in cutlets and some lemon in slices. Wait, so you put it on a spit after you roast it. Is this after you boil it? Yes. You boil it, then you boil it, then you roast it, then you put it on a spit. <laughs> <Huh>. <laughs> Wow, so... Uh, I, What's wow, the guy it... that uh, wrote all those plays in England that I can't think of the name of because it's 6 o'clock in the morning? Shakespeare? Is this what it, killed him? Ed Johnson. <laughs> you weak meats only get cooked once. This one gets cooked five times. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> and it's uh, so, got a so, bear egg. <laughs> Before we continue, to egg too. Uh, I want to announce that we have another donation incentive. Um, if uh, if Sauce will just, uh, you know, drag his art a little bit to that. There we go. Uh, we've got this lovely picture of the queen, uh, which, which Sauce uh, immediately dove on September 8th for some reason. That was an interesting day. Um, and uh, and, and that, uh, that excited me and Lemon very, very much. Um, so, uh, uh, so we got temporary tattoos printed. <laughs> uh, that'll should just pop up on the stream in a second. <laughs> Uh, so for for sixteen dollars, uh, Lemon will mail you uh, a temporary tattoo of the Queen's head. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if you want if you want this, please donate. But make sure you select uh, in the rewards section of the donation uh, page to uh, claim the reward, uh, and no, and not just <coughs> hit the uh, jump straight to donation or whatever button it is on the reward panel, and you will get your own tattoo of the Queen. <laughs> wow, Salubrious Rex, that is a brave stance. <laughs> oh, and also, I, I guess we've got a uh, uh, we got a choice for next hour. We should probably activate that as well. Um, so let me uh, just go into the poll section in here and choice topics for hour twenty. Um, so when you donate, you can choose uh, one of two options for what we're going to read next hour, and that's uh, the word caregiver will give will. <laughs> Oh, yeah, the word caregiver will gross you out forever, or let's all electrocute our genitals. So it's caregivers or electrostim. Huh. That's so, a tough decision. Yeah. Well, yeah, nobody I'll wins. Take the well, while you, every day. Well, while you're deciding, uh, Montrith, I believe you're from England. Uh, can you tell us about Oxtripe? 
Hello, yes, I am from England. Um, I don't know why I sound Pakistani here for a while, but... <laughs> You're nailing it. You're nailing it. <laughs> yeah, perfect. This, this, this is the hox tribe. In English practice, the naturally green or grey tribe is always washed, bleached up for two days and boiled for about an hour, hour, should I say, so that the product <laughs> offered for sale is creamy white and ready to eat. Okay. This is going a lot worse than I thought it would be. <laughs> Trust me, my, mine's going to be just as bad. No, it's yeah. good. It's, it's good. It's it's fine. You sound like Isabella Rossellini. It's this great. Is, you had to double down on it. <laughs> absolutely perfect. Could not be improved. There was, there was once an entire empire devoted to the Oedipal stomach. Back in the, the 1950s <laughs> and the 60s, United Cattle Products, the UCP, had a chain of no less than 146 tripe restaurants to the northwest <laughs> and processing plant in the tripe colony of Fiswick <laughs> in East Manchester. And then they in became the villain of- in Doom. <laughs> 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 Just bathing in, in tripe. <laughs> in Wigan, Vols and Sons wood paneled Dripe Deluxe Restaurant, <laughs> opened in 1917, had seating from 300 and its own ladies orchestra. Were they paid in tripe? <laughs> Presumably. I mean, no, they were paid in bear <laughs> eggs. Oh, <laughs> you're were, right. They were okay. paid in badger hams. <laughs> you, know, you know how hard it is to get a bear egg? <laughs> you gotta negotiate with it. <laughs> that's that's amazing, uh, Montreux. Uh, perhaps our other British person, uh, Boot, could tell us about <laughs> tripe of eggs. Oi! What of Oi, eggs? This is, this... <laughs> Oi! This would... is that how eggs work? <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. Uh, I'm Mister Fontaine. <laughs> this this is what a British lawyer accent <laughs> sounded like when this uh, recipe is from. It doesn't sound like a modern British accent. <laughs> I hate yeah, that's good. I, hate trying to do this. <laughs> good. I don't know why I agreed to do this. Oh, I mate, this double down. No, it's oh, good. Tike, tike oh, the blimey. white of eggs. White them. White them very well in a porridge. Prepare then some hot water and vinegar with little salt and then put in the eggs. I can't. I, just, I hate it. Don't give up. They till they are hard, then cut them into pieces about an inch square, and then take some white wine. As much, it's not even so much of an accent; it is just a a, a varying loudness, uh, and as much water, and some spice. It's hot. Soif it up. Soif it up. <laughs> you turned into you skipped, you skipped about. Three sentences there, but okay. Nope. <laughs> we'll, <laughs> we'll <laughs> by oh no, somebody won't be able to follow the recipe. <laughs> oh, oh no. no. <laughs> I promised tribe of eggs at my party. Oh, okay. oh. First, so the, first the queen so dies and now this. Good. And then it <laughs> and it will eat like tripe. Or else you may serve it like a ragoust <laughs> with the following sauce. Sauce for the artificial tripe and ragoust. For the same, take strong gravy made of beef and the ingredients which are mentioned in the drawing of gravy. <laughs> also gravy. Gravy. <laughs> no, it's, it's, fan, it's fancy gravy. It has an E. Wait, if you, yeah. have, if you have beef to make gravy with, why don't you just have real tripe, which comes from the cow? Stop! No, you know that, I don't. <laughs> it's my own fault. Never mind. Keep going. <laughs> What does that mean? I don't know! How dare you? <laughs> Warm it up with a little white wine and thicken the sauce with burnt butter. <laughs> no, yeah, no, it's now, yeah, it is actually a New England accent now. And <laughs> 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 when the eggs are warm, citizen of the world, <laughs> pour, the, pour the sauce over them. <laughs> it's like I'm, oh, I'm listening oh, to my oh. uncle. Like, Oi, Jack Chick! Oi! <laughs> We've got poetry coming up. Oh. All right, all right. Can you read us the poetry recipe for duck and peas? <laughs> all right, then. This is a recipe for uh, stewed duck and peas. I give thee all my kitchen lore, though poor the offering be. 
I tell thee how it is cooked before you come to dine with me. The duck is trussed from head to heels, then stewed with butter well, and streaky bacon which reveals a most delicious smell. When duck and bacon in a mass you in a stew pan lay, a spoon around the vessel pass and gently stir away. A tablespoonful of flour bring, a quart of water plain, then in it twenty onions fling, and gently stir again. Whoa. <laughs> a bunch of parsley and a leaf of ever verdant bay. Two cloves I make my language brief, then add your peas you may. And let it simmer till it sings in a delicious strain. Then take your duck, nor let the strings for thrusting it remain. The parsley fail not to remove, also the leaf of bay. Dish up your duck, the sauce improve in the accustomed way. With pepper, salt, and other things I need not here explain. And if the dish contentment brings, you'll dine with me again. Bravo! Bravo! That's too many, too many onions. I like the seasoning part I, just skips it, where it's like, whatever, don't do you it. Need you don't the need onions. to. You really need the onions because this is, just onions? Butter, this is butter soup with some duck in it. Butter and bacon. I mean. I'm I'm really streaky bacon. There's I'd like a to take a moment to congratulate It's Spiffles for two things. Uh, one, for being the first recipient of a uh, dead queen head te uh, temporary tattoo. Nice. Uh, but also for uh, including the word queen in the donation has unlocked the uh, hidden Albert uh, mode, what? which Can't we can just know. appreciate. Yeah, it's yes. fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that's yeah that had been available all night. Oh, we kind of expected maybe somebody would uh, include the word I queen don't. in the donation at some point, but no, uh, but but uh, to my delight, uh, it didn't happen until now. So I'm, I'm very very happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, in in to keep things brief and cracking along, I think we're going to uh, skip the Greenwich sushi, which is uh, the fish dish, uh, oh. and uh, go straight on to the murder of several vegetables. We'll do it live. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they had it coming. Oh. Zola, since you uh, think they had it coming, you can read the next. Uh... Uh, salad. <laughs> a bacon Please. salad. Yes, nice. bacon salad. Yeah. Bacon yeah. salad. <laughs> <laughs> Having prepared any kind of salad you may happen to have, such as endive, corn salad, lettuce, celery, mustard, and cress, seasoned with beetroot, onions, or shallot, let the salad be cut up into a bowl or basin ready for seasoning in the following manner. Cut eight ounces of fat bacon into small square pieces the size of a cob nut. Mm. Uh, fry these in a frying pan. Fuck and is a cob nut? Cob nuts. How much? What's a cob you nut? Know. You know. Oh, <laughs> it's from the cob tree. Duh. We all know what a cob nut is, oh, right? It's a, it's a hazelnut, apparently. Mm. Nonsense. I also <laughs> agree that it's nonsense, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Fry these in a frying pan, and as soon as they are done, pour the whole upon the salad. Add two tablespoonfuls of vinegar, pepper, and salt to taste. Mix thoroughly. So just dump a bunch of bacon on your salad. Well, it's basically Mima, Mima's wilted uh, lettuce salad. That is that is exactly what the title said. It's you a bacon take, it's bacon salad. You take, you take your salad, you dice it up into tiny little pieces, then you put a whole shitload of bacon on it, and I don't know, like some vinegar or something, because it's healthy, I guess. <laughs> BLT salad. <laughs> ACR also bottle. Wait. Can you please tell us about the Devil Tavern cucumbers? The Devil Tavern. Ooh. Mm. A cryptid and a salad. <laughs> yeah. and, and probably Violet. also a footy team. <laughs> <laughs> Just what I've been looking for. Arr. Stewed cucumber slices with onion, fried in burned butter with claret. It is possible that the fruit referred to here is not the modern cucumber, but what we now call a courgette, a distinction unknown in England until Escoffier's book of around 1900. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Original receipt in Country Housewife and Ladies Director by Professor R. Bradley, 1728. To stew cucumbers from the Devil Tavern Fleet Street. <laughs> Take! 
This is in capital letters. So yeah. take <laughs> take a dozen large green cucumbers that are not too full of seed. This is important. Hmm. Pair them and slice them. And we're back take... to the joking again. <laughs> <laughs> if, if there was slicing and oh wait, that's it. If there was slicing and joking, I'm glad I missed that. <laughs> then take two large onions. And shred them indifferently small. You know, kind of small, kind of big. <laughs> indifferently yeah. small. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. Well, hey, whatever. Yeah, I, I hit it once. Who cares? <laughs> Put these in a saucepan. That and set them over the fire. Yeah. <laughs> and this is over. This is fire. All right, to stew with as much salt as you think convenient. Yeah, I'll over <laughs> A little bit, a lot, yeah, whatever. Stir them now and then till they are tender and pour them into a colander to drain from the water and are as dry as possible you can make them. So why did you add the water in the first place? Anyway, <laughs> then flour and put some pepper to them. After this, burn some butter in a frying pan. And when it is very hot, put in your cucumbers <laughs> and stir them continually till they are brown. Then... Put Whoa. to them about a gill, or would that be a gill, of curry, mm. and when what that is, is that? well mixed with them, serve them hot under roast mutton or lamb, oh. or else serve them on a plate. You know, mutton or lamb or plate, you know, ceramic. <laughs> Details. Meat trenchers. I didn't, I didn't imagine like I can't I can't picture a cucumber it like remaining integrity to the point where. It, <laughs> It's a, it's a brown like, slush at this point. Yeah. Oh. Well, yeah. they said they floured it. I you guess. Slap, they, they yeah, also you slap it down. And they also said it was probably zucchini, actually. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh. oh, like the courgette. Uh, th that's right. That's they, better. Didn't, they didn't know the difference between cucumbers and zucchini until Escoffier it's, told them. It's some well, kind of still, like greeny. They still because they call them courgettes. Zucchini <laughs> thingy. Anyway, you're supposed to put the plate upon sippets, whatever that is, fried and dipped Fish. in mutton. Or beef gravé. Wait, what are sippets? I think I, they're fish. What the fuck okay. are any of this? What is <laughs> burning your butter? Sippets are small cubes or <laughs> what wedges What does that mean? I don't know! <laughs> wow! Burning well, butter. <laughs> hearing all about these burning horrible, butter. horrible dishes has made me feel kind of sick. Uh, but that's all right because uh, British people uh, back in the day knew how to make uh, uh, drinks for sick people. All right, let's Kendrick, talk vampires. Ken Kendrick Lobster, can you please uh, read for us about the snail water? The admirable and most famous snail water. Take a pack of garden shell snails, wash them well in small beer, and put them in a hot oven till they are done making a noise. Then take them out and wipe them well from the green froth that is upon them, and bruise them shells and all in the stone mortar. Then take a quart of earthworms, scour them with salt, slit them, and wash them well with water from their filth. And in a stone mortar, beat them to pieces, then lay in the bottom of your distilled oh. pot, Angelica, two handfuls, and two handfuls of Celandine upon them, to which put two Angelica. quarts of rosemary flowers, bear's foot, agrimony, red dock roots, bark of barberries, betony, wood sorrel. Of each two handfuls, rue one handful, then lay the rue the whole dish. <laughs> oh, this is all one sentence. <clears throat> yes, rue that thing you should famously ingest. <laughs> Rue one handful, then lay the snails and worms on top of the herbs and flowers, then pour on three gallons of the strongest ale, and let it stand all night. In the morning, put three ounces of cloves beaten, six pennyworth of beaten saffron, on the top of them six ounces of shaved heart's horn, then set on the limebeck, and close it with paste. And right, so, so you make a pie out of it, of course. The water <laughs> by pints, which will be nine in all, the first is the strongest, whereof take in the morning two spoonfuls in four spoonfuls of small beer, and like in the afternoon you must keep a good diet and use moderate exercise to warm the blood. This water is good against all obstructions whatsoever. It cureth a consumption and dropsy, and the stopping of the stomach and liver. It may be distilled with milk for weak people and children, with heart's tongue and elecampance. Distilled with milk? I can't believe that people wow. have been going like... 
For hundred, hundreds of years, they have been going like, the supplements will heal you, also you need good diet and exercise. So this, <laughs> this is definitely a potion, and also, <laughs> what h- half of that is not real stuff. <laughs> like the, the amazing thing about this is like is like we could probably like read like like you know the the translated instructions to a, like a Chinese food recipe from two thousand years ago and it would make sense and this is just like four hundred years ago British shit and this is like this is just this fucking nonsense this isn't food what is this yeah. it sounds like you have to go in the woods for like two days just to find all these different flowers <laughs> like, rubbish up some shit from your backyard. You know, well, well, yeah. boil it for a while. Well, everything ultimately, was all about quests back then. <laughs> ultimately, all you're doing is you're basically just like <laughs> boiling a bunch of crap into some beer. Well, and then make them drink it. Make them drink it. It's gonna imagine, be great. Make them imagine drink. you are like deathly ill, and someone comes to you with a cup of this, and like, yeah, I just went out in the woods and got a whole bunch of bullshit. So <laughs> it's I got bet. worms in it. <laughs> Well, beef like a, tea and uh, toast water are most more self-explanatory than you might think. So maybe we should go on to drinks for well people, or people that peace, were well water. before they <laughs> drank it. Could, could we read toast water just so everybody knows exactly what that is? All right, yeah. okay. to- toast water. How to make toast water. Toast a piece of bread thoroughly brown to its center without being burnt. Put it in a jug, pour boiling water over it, cover over, and allow it to stand and steep until it's cooled. It will then be fit to drink. So it's basically unfermented kvass. Yeah. Wait, where, where no, do you- it's toast water. Where, oh. <laughs> where do you put the beans? <laughs> There's no like the random beans like, muddy peas. In, in, you know where you can put those beans, Jack Chick. <laughs> right, you're smoking bishop. <laughs> smoking uh, bishop. That uh, sounds like a jelking accident gone wrong. Smoking bishop. Uh Montriff, can you please read us about smoking bishop? That's smoking bishop. Um no, that's not the, any kind of accent. Okay, anyway, no, going on. This is the bishop, Surrey. Stick 12 cloves into a lemon, not try to the rind, and put Whoa. it in the oven for half an hour. Put a good-sized pint of mixed spice into half a pint of water and boil it. Boil it separately one and half pints of sherry, and the, uh, add the lemon and the spiced water to this. Stand in a very warm place for a few minutes. <laughs> Wait, is is am I supposed to stand in the warm place? Yeah. Or are the ingredients supposed to do stand that? in a place and think about what you've done? <laughs> Take another lemon, rub two ounces of lump sugar on the rind, and squeeze out half of the juice, and then let it to rest and serve up very hot. Hmm. I, I was... How are you supposed to do that if you're in a different place for a few minutes? <laughs> no. Uh. Uh. All right. Uh. Who who I call on in a little bit? Roast uh, a lemon, put it in some boots sherry. Boots gear. Can yeah. you please tell us about cock ale? But you don't have to do an English accent okay. because I think it'll take too long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> I appreciate the mercy that you've delivered me. <laughs> cock ale. <laughs> yeah. That's to fun. make to make cock ale, <laughs> take eight <laughs> gallons of ale. Take a oh. cock. <laughs> boil, boil him well. Now well, we're now back I'm to joking. I, 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 I was in right up until that point. Now I'm out. <laughs> um, then, then take four pounds of raisins in the raisins of the sun, well stoned. Hmm. Two, <laughs> uh, two or three yeah. nutmegs, three or four flakes of mace, half a pound of dates. Beat these all in a mortar and put them in two quarts of the best sack. Mm. And put to them, put to them two quarts of the best sack. And sack is capitalized, so it's something. Sa- it's sack a- is a sack is an old type, timey type of wine. Yeah. Mm. Okay. And when the ale hath done working, put these in and stop it close six or seven days. Then bottle it, and a month after. You may drink it. Oh. Congratulations, you've made rooster fruit beer. Beer. Yeah. yeah. Wow. What happens if you drink it early? <laughs> Terrible things. Yeah. I mean, could you get more sick than drinking it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right I can't tell you how many times I've been sick, and I'm like, man, I'm really going to need something in a month. 
<laughs> oh, go, right. good, go good right now being sick uh, ale, I wanna, ale I wanna and chicken give you the highlights <laughs> of, of a, a lovely a lovely drink called Nagus which is <laughs> equal parts fortified rich wine usually port balls or sherry boiling water with sugar lemon and vanilla and nutmeg hmm. in 1763 James Boswell uh <laughs> Having fallen for his Louisa and, and wishing to express his love vigorously, took her to an inn where they ordered a bowl of negus, very rich for the fruit, which I caused to be set in the room as a reviving cordial. Louisa allowed him full possession of my warmest wishes, and at last I sank to rest in her arms, and she and mine, I found the negus, which had a very fine flavor, very refreshing to me. So you think it's an adult getting it on drink, but yep. no. When we go to the recipe for making negus, uh, it it notes that this beverage is more more usually drunk at children's parties than at any other. <laughs> hmm. And oh, wow. while you be thinking maybe that means it's for the adults at the children's party, no, sufficient. Allow one pint of wine with other ingredients in proportion for a party of nine or ten children. <laughs> Good. Wow. The, the I, only I, acceptable I, quantities of children at a party. <laughs> Definitely. I think I now understand why the British are so depressed all the time. <laughs> I am also going to skip over the wonder of eggs, drinks with eggs and other lumpy things in that. Just letting you know that Egg Hot and Huckle My Buff are both proof that Egg Nog used to be made mostly with hot beer and eggs beaten together. Huckle my buff. That's right. Huckle my buff. Again, we're back to jelking. What's the one after that? Flummery Coddle. Flummery Coddle is where you take what we, what, what you, sorry, you Americans would call a pudding, and you boil it in ale to make a thick drink. There will remain in the coddle some lumps of the congealed flummery. Which are not ungrateful. Yay, they've left us out of this! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> and we will go now to puddings, that thing which Englishers call all desserts. Oh. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, well, 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 well. Going on back on my list again. Uh, dinner, dinner, <laughs> dinner, 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 dinner. dinner. <laughs> Zola, can you call? Mm. Can you tell us about Kentish Well Pudding, aka the Butter Volcano? Oh no! <laughs> from it's it's from eighteen forty five. All right, I don't care. <laughs> Make into a firm, smooth paste with cold water, one pound of flour, six ounces of finely minced beef suet, three quarters of a pound of currants, and a small pinch of salt, thoroughly mixed together. Form into a bowl six ounces of good butter and enclose it securely in about a third of the paste, rolled to a half inch of thickness in the same way that an apple dumpling is made. Roll out the remainder of the paste and place the portion containing the butter in the center of it. With the part where the edge was drawn together turned downwards, gather the outer crust around it and after having moistened the edge, close it with great care. Tie the pudding tightly in a well-flavored cloth. No, sorry, well-floured cloth. <laughs> Don't eat the cloth, but... <laughs> And, bo <laughs> yeah, I mean, and boil it for two hours and a half half feet half feet must be dished with caution that it may not break and a small bit must be cut directly from the top as in a meat pudding uh, this is a very favorite pudding in some parts of England the only difficulty in making or in serving it is to prevent the escape of the butter which if properly secured will be found in a liquid state on the inside oh. upon opening it some timid cooks fold it in three coverings of paste, the better to guard against it busting through, but there is no danger of this. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes, the best application of that noise. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but there is no danger of this if the edges of the crust will be well closed. When suet is subjected to... <laughs> Seven ounces of butter may be substituted for it. The currants are usually omitted. So, so the, you can have 13 ounces of butter in a giant ball of pastry. Yep. Yep. Oh, and with beef. Oh. There's some beef in there. Of beef suet pastry, so. Yeah. Beef fat. Or just say, play for time by just drinking the butter. 
Yeah, it's you might like, as well just melt the butter and just drink that. It's some kind of pastry coconut. You're getting butter water out of it. Well, I don't. I don't think the English are allowed to eat anything that doesn't come in a pie. <laughs> Get the lot. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> I oh. Oh, I'm almost ready to tap out. That was disgusting. <laughs> this has been a tough one to read. Holy, <laughs> Paula Dean would like that one. It's been a tough one to comprehend. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> it's like take some pastry and do trigonometry to it, and at some point you put butter in there. I don't know, whatever. Cook it, <laughs> <laughs> and then that happens. <laughs> Kendra Klobster. Can you please tell us about the potato cheesecake? Oh. <clears throat> what? Potato cheesecake. Mm. Mashed potato with butter, sugar, lemon, and egg baked. Oh. The term cheese uh... may derive from the earlier usage meaning molded. Two ounces um. of butter oh. are the same of pounded sugar. Six ounces of potatoes boiled and floured through a sieve. The rind of one lemon. Half the juice, unless acid is desirable. Mix these ingredients well together with two eggs. Fill the tart pan and bake. Hmm. I mean, um, maybe. I think I, I, I probably would. Hmm. I'm not used to it. Hmm. A sweet potato is. I'm not used to that, but. Well, like, I don't <laughs> know. It's, 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 just, it's just a starch. So it's like, it's. Like, you know. That's true. That's true. Hmm. Ounces of potatoes is not a lot. I, yeah, I feel like, it, I feel yeah, like it's. That's true. I, I feel like it's just going to be like a dead sweet <laughs> lump. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, it's like, basically potato with bar. With a hint of lemon. It's just yeah. a great big potato fucking pancake. I, mean, <laughs> I got no problem with that. It's called potato pancake. Or, you know. I'm just confused that they left out the next step, which is to, you know, make a puff pastry and then fill it with the potato. <laughs> <laughs> Boil it. <laughs> Seven pounds of butter. Yeah. <laughs> They're also little. Can you please tell us... Hastily, about Pope Lady Cakes. Pope Lady Cakes. Well, hastily, no less. Wow. All right. <clears throat> We're going to do... All right. All right. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> a few generations ago, Pope Ladies, Pope Ladies was a familiar street cry on Easter's <laughs> Day in the ancient Hertfordshire town of St. Albans, where hucksters carried about baskets of curious looking buns and bake shops displayed them in windows. Pope <laughs> Ladies went out of fashion long ago. Ah, this is strange too, because since they taste much like hot cross buns, their shape delights the fancy of children and arouses the curiosity of adults. The form of Pope <laughs> Ladies is indeed extraordinary. Nobody knows how it originated, though. The dough is fashioned to the rude outlines of a female figure. Hello. A small round <laughs> bun with current eyes makes the head, the body, which has no legs, because you don't need to, <coughs> and ends at a point, resembles nothing so much as an Egyptian mummy case. Hmm. Two small lumps at the sides indicate arms. Does okay. arouse my curiosity. It's true. All right. It's not what I was expecting, but all right. All right. Today, <laughs> pulp ladies are an amusing accompaniment to punch or hot spice cider at the New Year's party. Drop-in guests on New Year's Day will appreciate them hot with homemade preserves and coffee or tea. Scald milk, add butter, sugar, and salt. Stir, and when cooked to lukewarm, add yeast, which has first been thoroughly dissolved in the water. Stir, sift together, flour and nutmeg, and add gradually to the first mixture. Combine thoroughly, add beaten eggs, and mix together to make soft dough. Set to rise overnight in a warm place and in, in a greased covered bowl. In the morning, punch that dough. Punch it down. <laughs> yeah. Shape it. Yeah. Show who's boss. And shape it into small buns and look, you know, something like that. And turns the eye. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm just like taking both my hands to winch my jaw back shut because I was like, I'm hey, we've got a... more recipes in little time. <laughs> and again, I get a you bunch of shit. Here you go, Pope Lady. <laughs> there you uh, go. Very good. We will we will skip over uh, very sweet meats such as Nelson's balls, Uncle Joe's mint balls, and lettuce or mallow suckets. And Jack Chick. Yes. With gravitas. With gravitas, Jack Chick. Allow me. Can you tell it's us very... about coronation chicken? Of course. Pieces of cooked chicken meat and a curry-flavored mayonnaise devised to celebrate the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II in 1953. Originally a salad dish now most commonly used as a sandwich filler. 
Buckingham Palace press statement of 25 May 2003 explains that coronation chicken was invented for foreign guests who were to be entertained after the coronation. The food had to be prepared in advance, and Constance Spry, who also helped with the floral arrangements on the day, proposed a recipe of cold chicken in a curry cream sauce and a well-seasoned dressed salad of rice, green peas, and mixed herbs. Constance Spry's recipe won the approval of the Minister of Works and is since known as Coronation Chicken. Hmm. Oh my I god, he used recipe instead of receipt. What, a... what the hell, man? <laughs> Please read the recipe. <laughs> 2.3 kilograms of chicken, tablespoon vegetable oil, small finely chopped onion, tablespoon curry paste, tablespoon tomato puree, 100 milliliters of red wine, bay leaf, half lemon juice, uh, four finely chopped apricot halves, and 300 milliliters of mayonnaise, uh, 100 mil milliliters of whipping cream, salt and pepper, and watercress to garnish. Skin the chicken, cut into small pieces, and grill it until cooked. In a small saucepan, heat the oil, add the onion, and cook for about three minutes until softened. Add the curry paste, tomato puree, wine, bay leaf, and lemon juice. Simmer uncovered for about ten minutes until well reduced. Strain and leave to cool. Puree the chopped apricot halves in a blender or food processor through a sieve. Beat the cooled sauce into the mayonnaise with the apricot puree, whip the cream to stiff peaks, and fold into the mixture. Gross. Season, adding a little extra lemony juice if necessary. Fold in the chicken pieces, garnish with watercress, and serve. Oh, God save the queen! Uh, I was with that for a little bit, and then it just took a... Sharp right turn. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> and a minister, yeah. there was a ministry that approved this. It certainly was. Well, this is this is 1953, so all the all the food was basically like this, like salads that did not come. <laughs> it didn't have aspic in it. Yes, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> so ridiculous! What have we learned today? Oh. Boy, this one is amazing. This was a tough one for me. Um, or regret. have learned, or cannot do a British accent. <laughs> I think I've I've learned a few things that I can do uh, on January first for my big like stupid Twitter food thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> now, now you need to put all of these recipes into an air fryer. <laughs> I've read <laughs> I've read things about people putting bugs up their dicks, like huffing whatever. This right. nearly made me tap out. Mm -hmm. So, uh, God, save the I've my limits. God save the queen. I learned that you can get an egg from a bear. Oh, yeah. Sure. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can I make learned, ha ham out uh, of badgers. Yeah, I learned how delicious badger was. I'm going to go and try and eat some now. Provided you <laughs> salt it and boil it and roast it and fry it and yeah, store it. Only it. To, it only has to be <laughs> boiled for five hours. Come on. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> I learned that British children love booze and Uncle Joe's mint balls. <laughs> and if you love balls, why don't you go on down to the ball pit? Nice. Oh, nice! There are plenty no. of balls there. B-A-L-L-T yeah, dot I-T. Very good, very good. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And also, wow. I, I went a little too fast, so we have... To, to no, no, it's, it's fine. Uh, I just want to announce that uh, I'm going to close the poll off at this point. So it looks like, and God help us all, uh, we're doing caregivers mm. next hour. Mm. Um, Get ready for stories about bed sores, folks. Mm. Don't want okay. that. All right, we're going we're gonna <laughs> to take off for 10 minutes. Up. Sorry? No, no. I just remembered I have to be a part of that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> mantra. Yeah. It's too oh, late. You're chained sorry. to this radiator. Yeah, you you're not going you, anywhere. <laughs> you will share in our pain. Uh, oh. So, I would have donated to the other one if I had remembered. <laughs> uh, okay, we're gonna be back with me, Isfahan, John Toast, Kumquat, Kendrick Lobster, and Montreth with uh, sauce remaining on the art. So, if I could find that button, it's over there. Oh, there it is, right there. Get right, it. Bye. -bye. <laughs> <laughs> not the one I was expecting, but all right then. That's not coming out. Uh, <laughs> oh shit! Oh uh, wait, we're okay. <laughs> <laughs>